I've been researching prehistoric Southwest pottery for many decades, and the one pottery type I always come back to that you just fall in love with are the Mimbres pottery vessels, the bowls, because they illustrate life ways and mythologies and the stories and the legends of their time. And I've had the privilege, the extreme privilege, of being in the back rooms of the museums where all this stuff is stashed away. And I've examined not dozens of these vessels, but hundreds of them. And I've recorded the images. And we have everything from Coco Paley to Spider Grandmother and the Warrior Twins. And we have hundreds of them to show you, and I can't wait to get started. It's going to be a lot of fun. So hold on to your seat. Okay, we're going to talk today about fertility, conception, birth, and there's a lot of great images. This is uh, rabbits and a fertility staff. Rabbits represent the moon and fertility. A lot of fertility symbols with rabbits. This is a fertility staff, male part, female part. It almost always has this zigzag pattern on the, on the shaft. Rabbits and fertility. This is the kill hole, don't forget. That's not part of the depiction. Now here's another fertility staff. I don't, I have never heard anyone ever actually found one of these staffs in the archaeology, in the, in the excavations. I've never heard that anybody ever actually discovered one or unearthed one. Uh, but we see them all over the place in the Mimbres art. I don't know why two quail are perched on them here, but male part, female part, and this is the part I want to talk about here, this little circle. This is probably conception or baby in the womb, and I'm going to show you a whole bunch of slides of babies in the womb. They're always depicted in white because they're not of this world yet. Uh, folks who have just been, who are deceased uh, or dealing with death or not yet born, uh, they're depicted in white. Anything on, on this plane are, usually is in black. And you see all kinds of face masks and different things. But this is what I want to talk about. This is the fertility staff. This is probably the baby in the womb. No baby in there yet, but I'll show you some that have them. Here we have copulation. Notice that the fertility staff has this zigzag pattern. Notice her leggings have the same zigzag pattern. I've seen that multiple times, not just once or twice. Now, I, this is really fun. There's a lot of depictions of a guy and a gal behind a blanket fooling around. <laughs> I guess to conceive you've got to have a little foreplay. But they're, you know, these, these look like two men, and we, we do have uh, uh, homosexual uh, depictions. But this is guy and a gal, guy and a gal. Yes, yeah, this is two guys. So it looks like uh, the meat bears might have been had quite an acceptance level of, of uh, variations in sexual behavior. And of course you have to have an erection to copulate. This cocopaly is often shown with a just grand erection. We also have lots of Mimbres uh, depictions, a lot of Mimbres art, with all kinds of crazy penises doing crazy things. Here we go. We have this giant guy here with this really crazy headdress carrying, of course, two rabbit throwing sticks. These are like little boomerangs that they would throw and dispatch the rabbits. He has this giant penis, giant erection, and three little guys carrying it along here. There's another fellow with this incredibly long penis copulating, and a couple of guys helping him out there holding the penis. Here we have another character with this tremendous penis going back, almost like it's attacking him. And here we have a depiction of male homosexuality, male, two males copulating. They're both males. They have the Heracue and the Heracue. And we saw that in the other slide, the two fellows fooling around behind the blanket. So the mean varies, uh, had pretty high acceptance levels of uh, variations in sexual behavior. 
many thousands of years ago. Very cool. A little better. This is a lot of fun. Well, here we have, first of all, we have a probably coyote mating with an antelope. Another copulation scene. Most of the juicy parts have been punched away by the kill hole. Another fellow with an erection. This one's a little bit complex. I really can't tell what's going on much here. This is the fun one here, though. Here's a, gu here's a gal, and here's a guy, and he's got an erection. They're on a blanket, and she has removed her sash and has thrown it all over to the side. You see her throwing her clothing off. <laughs> and we have erections all over the place. You, always, you see a lot of rabbit symbols with erections. Here we go, a rabbit, rabbit throwing stick, and an erection with a little dot on the end like this. Now here we go. Check this one out. Here's a rabbit throwing stick, some sort of animal-human combination. And look at this penis. It has a little face, a little head and eye and face. This is uh, a depiction of a rather violent sexual scene. This is the maiden who thwarted her attackers with a toothed vagina. And these women are linked arm, probably captives. Now this is the embryo in the womb. This is the best one right here that, I, that really shows it very, very well. This is the baby in the womb, not born yet. So they're in white. You see a lot of these images. Here's another one. There's another one. There's another one. And remember the fertility staff with the white circle? That's what we're looking at here. And here's another one. And here's a look at these. They're all over the place. This is the baby in the womb. I really wish I had one with a, with a female character, but this is the way they show it. Here's another one. Now this little ripply line, I want to talk about this in another lecture, but this little ripply line probably re uh, represents sound. Uh, talking, singing. You often see this coming out of uh, people's mouths, uh, animal mouths during an argument. Uh, probably represents sound. And here, of course, we have to have birth. You have conception. A mother, a new mother, she's removed her sash and belt, and there's the little baby coming out. He looks, <laughs> and this is the squat position. We also have the prone position. Here's the one you just saw. There's another squat position birth. Now here is the midwife, a female midwife, and prone position, and the baby is being born. Now, of course. And here we have four women. We, a little baby here, four women. Now these two are looking backwards. These two are looking forwards. These two have white faces. This could be an ancestral thing. A new baby, mother, maybe her mother, and then maybe grandma, great-grandmother, something like that. This has been suggested with this image before. And of course you have a baby that gets sick. In this one, we have another copulation scene. And then we have the shaman healing the baby again. Here's the distressed, sick baby. Notice the face is white because he's not healthy, he's sick. Here's the very distressed mother. Here's the shaman, a male person with a rattle and his little magic kit. And he's doing a little healing ceremony for the baby. And over here again, the very distressed mother. Notice the hand on the head the posturing, and the baby, and the shaman with the rattle. Very same thing. Healing ceremony for a sick baby. The Mimbres images we saw today were painted between 1000 AD and 1280 AD. And if you want, there's a lot more of them, and we're going to have other, uh, other videos you can see, but if you want to get a copy of the book, Mimbres Mythology, there's a lot of these images we're going to be showing. Uh, just email me, and the address is in the uh, description in this video. It's just kunkel uh, at hotmail.com. That's C-U-N-K-L-E. 
and just email me and I'll, I'll sign a copy and make sure you get it. Thanks for watching today. Give me a like, if you like.